everyone, Mike Wolf here. Thank you so much for tuning in and welcome to another edition of Entrepreneurs Making a Difference where we try to connect uh, different entrepreneurs from all over the place that are doing phenomenal things and, and they're on top, of the, on top of their game. And my goal is really to connect all these people so that we can uh, do bigger and better things together and collaborate. And so I'd like to really welcome uh, today a, a great uh, friend and, and uh, amazing marketing genius, I would call him, uh, Teddy Garcia. I'm going to just read his bio here. Uh, Teddy is an idea-generating machine that can help you to quickly identify all the untapped opportunities in your business and provide simple solutions to your most complex technical business and marketing challenges. His favorite thing to do besides riding dirt bikes with his son is to teach business owners how to automate their key business and marketing processes so they can scale their business, make more money, and have more free time to do the things they love. Teddy is the founder and president of InfoMarketingSystem.com, where he and his team are the secret weapons and marketing automation strategists for some of the world's top marketers and thought leaders, including Jay Abraham, Robert Allen, Sally Hogshead, James Malinchak, uh, Mary Ellen Tribby, Beth Davis, Telman Knudsen, Lifebook, and, and tons and tons more. So having seen and executed so many multi-million dollar campaigns for these top experts, Teddy has unique insight and knowledge into what really works and what makes an online information business successful. So welcome to the show, Teddy. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Mike, man. This is a, this is a great opportunity, and you know, I, I, really, I really love the way you and I connected when we first met, so uh, I'm, I'm really glad that we're doing this and kind of getting this information out to, to everybody because it's, it's definitely valuable, and I see a lot of people struggling with it, so uh, uh, I'm excited to, to kind of share as much as I can today. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it truly is great to have you here. And I remember uh, the first time I met you was at an event, and everybody knew you there. And I, I'm, I don't really follow online marketers that much, to be honest with you. And so I didn't really exactly know who you were, but I knew everybody was talking about you. And they said, hey, there's Teddy. And so everybody seemed to know you. And I thought, i got to get to know this guy and see what he's up to. And I know the, the world of, I mean, online marketing is constantly evolving and changing. How, how do you keep up with that? I mean, it seems like every day there's something new. Yeah, I mean, luckily that's that's kind of one of the things that I love about about my job and, and my business is the fact that it is constantly changing and that uh, you know I'm always having to to kind of you know learn new stuff. Um, but I, but I did realize uh, early on that that there was so much changing in in online marketing that it's really important to to just focus, right? Um, you know, one of, one of the big mistakes that I see a lot of online marketers make. Is they get stuck, they get stuck in this trap of you know wanting to buy, read, or consume everything that comes out. And, you know, and the and the reality is is that that creates a scenario where you're doing just in case learning instead of just in time learning, right? Whereas you know you're buying something just in case you might want to do that someday, as opposed to hey, I need to go write a sales letter. Let me go write. Let me go buy a copywriting course right now. Go through it. Do what it says write my sales letter, make some money, and then, okay, great, now i got to go do the next thing or the next thing, but, you know, do it as you need it, so, so that's, that, you know, and that's, so that's my challenge, too, is, you know, because I love software, right, so anytime there's a new, you know, there's tons of new software applications being launched every day, especially productivity tools like project management or time management or things like that, because I'm all about efficiency, um, I can catch myself getting caught up, like, you know, Signing up for a new trial, testing out the software, playing with it, stuff like that. In fact, I'm probably going to start a new blog. Yeah. Uh, do, you ever feel, do you ever feel overwhelmed? Because I know so many entrepreneurs they get overwhelmed by this uh, stuff. Not not just uh, marketing, but just everything. They try to do everything themselves, and it's very difficult. I, I'm I'm a big fan of of delegating and getting professionals and people that are a lot smarter than me to do. For instance, my marketing, because I'm not an expert at that. I've, I've uh, I'm an expert at real estate. I don't want to be the expert at every uh, piece of the equation. So do you ever get overwhelmed yourself with all the stuff? Yeah, no, I mean, I've gotten to the point where, you know, I'm pretty clear on on what my strength is, uh, which is really kind of the visioning process. It's kind of being able to talk to a business owner, kind of figure out where they're at, where they're trying to go, and kind of build them that blueprint for, for how to fill that out, what systems they need, what the processes need to be, what the communications and tasks and things like that need to be. Uh, and everything else at this point, I completely delegate and keep off my plate. But there was a time where I was certainly definitely trying to do it all myself and wanted my hands in every little area of my business and things like that. But, you know, it's all about, find, like you said, finding the right people. And it's not, it's not how can I do something, it's who can do this for me, you know. 
it's kind of yeah, good. Exactly. Well, yeah. I'm really glad I met you because I know we're going to do some some amazing stuff uh, together here coming up, and I'm I'm really excited about that. But uh, tell tell me about your you wrote a book, How to Create a Sell a Sales Vortex, and you wrote that that was with uh, Jay Abraham, and I know you do. You know, huge launches for people like Jay Abraham and, and some of the biggest people, James Malinchak, and just huge people in the industry. And um, you know, tell us, I guess, how this all came about. How did you get into this in the first place, and how did you end up hooking up with all these people? And, and you're doing literally seven-figure launches. Yeah. So, uh, so it all started back in actually 1997. Uh, I used to. I wasn't own even born back then. Wow. Yeah, I know. Yeah, the internet, the internet barely existed. I mean, actually, it all started. I started much younger when I was a kid, but I was about 10 years old. My dad was totally into computers and stuff, uh, and so I remember remember not having an Xbox or a PlayStation or anything like that. I remember if I wanted to play a computer game, I literally had to spend a week copying code out of a magazine and typing it into a computer to, to make a game run. Uh, so that's kind of where I learned programming and, and working with computers. But like in 97, uh, I owned a, a bicycle store. I had worked in bike shops pretty much all my life as a kid and was fortunate enough to be able to go back and buy my hometown shop. And that was kind of right when the internet was starting. Uh, and I wanted a website for it because I really wanted to start selling bike parts all, all over the place. And so I built a website for it. And a couple other local businesses saw the website and were like, hey, can you build me one? And I was like, sure, you know. And so I was quickly making three, four thousand bucks per site on the weekends, uh, which was, you know, that's like selling fifty bikes. So it was, you know, it was a lot easier, a lot cheaper, no overhead. I could do it from anywhere. So I, I sold the store. I moved to North Carolina. Uh, I worked for a couple other different dot coms. We used to build. CD and DVD stores for radio stations online, uh, and then I ran one of the probably the fourth or fifth largest online shopping mall uh, in the country. And it was in that business that I realized that me and my partner were struggling too much trying to do it all ourselves. And uh, I went searching for answers to to solve that. I stumbled across Rich Sheffrin's stuff, uh, and I saw kind of his U map, which is like you know you in the middle and all the different tasks that need to happen in an online business. And that was like a real, a real reality check. Uh, so I joined his coaching program, built a relationship with him, offered to help him out on some stuff. He gave me a job, and that's really where I first saw kind of behind the scenes of of all the automation stuff and you know how Infusionsoft gets leveraged and, and all that kind of thing. Uh, and then from there, my career just pretty much spiraled. Rich connected me with Jay, and then the rest is kind of history. It's, it's all been by referral. It's all been by, by word of mouth. Although I do go to a lot of events, too, so I've been very public uh, you know, in our positioning and things like yeah, that. Yeah, well, so I suppose when you start doing launches and you're making people you know, well into the seven figures, I guess that the word gets around pretty quick, too, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. Well, because you know, some of the, some of the CRM software tools are, are fairly complicated, uh, and there's a lot of people that claim to know how how to make them work, and then there's people that do. So. Right, right. So, so let me ask you this: your your book is is all about sales sales vortexes. What's a sales vortex? So sales vortex. So you know, a lot of people talk about sales funnels, um, and sales funnel in my mind is more of a of a gravity-led system because the funnel is kind of vertical, so you're kind of dropping people into the top of the funnel and hoping that they'll kind of fall out the bottom as, as highly profitable customers. Uh, a sales vortex is more of a, of a sideways funnel in some ways, and it's got, you know, this, if you think of a, of a vortex, kind of like a tornado kind of thing, it's, it's got a sucking motion that, that actually pulls people into it, and it's pulling them in with engaging content, valuable information, all that kind of stuff, and then it has lots of different sequences and campaigns to basically nurture the, the, the customer throughout their entire life cycle, from prospect to customer to uh, buying more things from you and having a deeper engagement with you to becoming a referral partner or an, an advocate for you, things like that. So it's addressing all the different stages of the customer life cycle and making sure that you have campaigns and sequences and content uh, around that, so it outlines that whole process. Right, right. That's that's awesome. So um, let me ask you this: what, what are some of the mistakes you see people making these days? And when, when they're first getting on, into the online marketing, I mean, a lot of people try to do this themselves. What are some of the biggest, let's say, the three biggest mistakes that you see? Well, so the first one I, I think uh, we already touched on, which was that you know trying to buy every. So it's basically about being tactical versus strategic, right? So. 
you know, most of the courses and tools and software that are being put out there for sale and in this in this space are all tactics. There's how to get your YouTube video ranked, or you know, how to how to maximize your Facebook fan page, or or whatever. And those are all tactics, but you need to know what your overall strategy is, right? And, and where that fits in your strategy, as opposed to just kind of going out and buying everything that or trying different things that just keep you distracted from from what you're actually trying to accomplish. So th that's the first thing is you kind of really build the blueprint of what you want to build. Uh, map out the entire process from start to finish uh, and actually work backwards, right? So start with what are all the things I want somebody to buy from me uh, and then how do I, what, what are the steps do they need to take to get to that level where they've bought everything and, and plan for what happens if they don't do what they're supposed to do, right? So if they, if they come to my website and they download my free report but they don't read it, it's not going to be very valuable, right? So making sure that you have a process in place to encourage them to read what they just downloaded and take the next steps. So that's the number one thing. Um, the number two thing would be to avoid being a perfectionist. Every, yeah, I've seen so many people that are just want to get everything so perfectly right before they put it out to the world um, that they never get it out there, right? And and, and that's just a crying, crying shame. So it, the reality is in this business, you're, you're almost better off not creating the product. You're better off just putting up a landing page, testing some offers, seeing which ones resonate, and then kind of basing the product. You know, once you get some people to opt in for a simple free report or something like that about different topics that you could teach on, you figure out which one is generating the most leads, you ask those people what they really want in a course, and then you build the course for them, or sometimes you build the course on a fly. Like you can sell like an, you can sell an eight-week coaching program where you only know what you're going to teach week one, and weeks two through seven come out of the questions that you get week one, right? You just kind of keep building it gradually. So, because um, a lot of people will spend a year or two years creating their course or writing their book or whatever, and then they put it out in the market and, and nobody wants it. Um, and then the third is, is making sure that you're, that you're leveraging automation tools because, you know, they, they, they are the key to, to being successful in this business. There is, no, there is no top internet marketer that does not have a complete automation marketing platform. Uh, I'd say 80% of them use Infusionsoft, 20% of them use Office Autopilot. Um, but the reason they all use it, even with its imperfections, because neither one of those tools are perfect, um, but they're still better than any human could, could do or any team of humans could, could actually effectively manage all the different moving pieces that are going on in, in marketing campaigns. So, yeah. what, What's your personal preference between those two, by the way, between Office Autopilot and Infusionsoft? Man, um, so like I said, you know, at this point it's probably Infusionsoft um, only because only because, it, you know, their graphical user interface that they have now for building campaigns um, allows you to see what you've actually built, right? So it, it office, like office Autopilot is more powerful in some ways. It actually has better split testing. It has uh, better logic uh, functionality. It can track the engagement with your website a little bit better. So in some ways, it has a little bit better functionality. But the problem is, is that once you set it up, there's no easy way to see what you've built unless you've mapped it out beforehand, which you should do anyways. But um, So that's really kind of the biggest difference. And, you know, if you've just got a lot of money behind it right now, that's going to be fueling future development and support and, and that kind of stuff. So, But you really can't go wrong with either solution, um, and, and they're both lacking critical things that are needed that you have to build kind of third party. So. Yeah, well, just like anything else, I mean, those, those two products are evolving themselves, and, and it, it, you know, it's kind of case in point to what you were saying that, you know, just get, get something out there. It's going to evolve, but don't try and have it perfect right off the bat because it's not going to be. It's always going to get better over time, and as you get feedback and as people start using it, they're going to find the imperfections, but you can always make it better. Yeah, yeah, and anyway, for people that are just starting out even, like, you know, um, to, like to do what I just said, which is kind of just to test a concept, man, it would be like, like I would just get a lead pages account, set up some lead pages, landing pages uh, with a simple, e even if it's Mailchimp at, at this point, just to start. There's actually a better one than Mailchimp, like in that free category called the uh, called Active Campaign that people could use for an email system. That one's just email. So the difference between like Active Campaign and Infusion and Entreport is Active Campaign is just email. The other ones have shopping cart and affiliate management and, and all that kind of stuff built in. But uh, 
but yeah, you know, lead pages account with some Facebook traffic just to kind of test some offers and see what's working, and what's going to resonate, and then grow from there. What I wouldn't do is I wouldn't, I would try to pick the best system that you can afford, um, because it's go, it's going to get harder and harder to be moving your list from one system to another. True, um, true. Yeah. It's, a, it's also, uh, I guess, if you're getting one of the, if you're getting like Infusionsoft or Office Autopilot. Um, I think a lot, a lot of people, unless unless you do this for a living, a lot of people struggle with it. And they, I mean, I don't, I don't want to pick on Infusionsoft. But I know people call it Confusionsoft. Yeah. So make sure you have somebody that can help you. I know, that, I know they offer training and stuff. But if it's not your forte and you're busy as a business person creating the stuff you need to create, uh, is that something that you would do, for example, for clients? You, you would actually set all that up for them. Yeah, I mean, most of our clients actually come come to Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, and spend two days with us, and we completely kind of whiteboard their their entire business over the course of two days. We get crystal clear on who their customer is, what products are selling, what the pain points of their market are, what we're going to use to to generate leads. Is it a free report? Is it a video series? Is it a webinar, etc. Um, and then we build out in detail like what are all the marketing campaigns that that are going to be needed to facilitate that. So all the emails that need to be created, all the landing pages, all the videos, whatever, everything is completely mapped out in a complete blueprint, uh, as well as how we're going to track everything. Because that's that's probably the other mistake that I see a lot of people not do correctly is they don't really track the results well enough. You know, like breaking things down by lead source. Like, you know, did they come from Facebook? Did they come from Google? Which keywords did they come from? And, and how do different lead sources convert differently for different offers? Because um, that, that's you know, you're, you're always hearing of oh well this you know this uh, this orange button worked 30 times better than this green button or something like that, and the reality is, is that may be true for that person, but you know if you don't test it on your own stuff and and you might find that with different sources of traffic the or the orange button works better from this source and the green button works better from that source, and so you got to really kind of be tracking and testing all that stuff to figure out. What really works the best? So. Yeah, well, that's that's huge and it's so important. And that's one one of the great things about the internet, though, is that we do have the ability to do you know split testing, and especially people with really huge lists. I know that I'm on some people's lists more than once. And I sometimes get two different emails with different uh, different verbiage and different content, and and uh, but it's always really important, of course, to test what's working. And, and sometimes those little differences when you're dealing with large amounts of people and large amounts of money can make all the difference. Yeah, well, and 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 again, this, you know, the segmenting and, and actually tracking your people properly so that you know, kind of who's in what program versus who's not. I'll give you a perfect example. I just I just got back from a. No, oh, are you still there, Teddy? I seem to have lost you. group and I got a letter in the mail from them uh, which was a, a special invitation to join their mastermind group right <laughs> which I'm already in so like you know that kind of stuff making sure that your list is accurately segmented so you're not sending the wrong message to the wrong people uh, make yourself look bad yeah, exactly. So uh, for a second there, you actually faded out. So I, I missed some of that comment, and, and we can actually go back and edit this, uh, Teddy. By the way, so I just want to. I'm just trying to think where to start off. Where did I, I'm just trying to think where I lost you. Uh, so so when, when I was saying was so last week I, I was at a so I, I I went to a free event with this particular company. I signed up for one of their uh, event packages that included a bundle of different events, and then from there I actually signed up for their mastermind group. And then I was at the mastermind group last weekend, or last week. And when I got home, I had an e I had a, a direct mail piece in my mailbox, inviting me to join the mastermind group that I was just at. Oh boy! <laughs> you know, so they just didn't have it segmented or tracked properly to know that I was already in there and still sent me a, an invitation to it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you got to be really careful with that. Um, so, um, what what are some of the ways that uh, any business can use you know online marketing and and Get you know to create that sales vortex. How how can any you know these online or some and sometimes it's not even online businesses. Sometimes it's offline businesses. How can they use the online world to get more customers and retain them? Sure. Well, you know the, the reality is is that it all breaks down 
for any business really into three steps, right? Um, and you know, even in your business, you know, real estate and things like that. You know, number one is you have to generate leads. I don't care what kind of business you are, you have to generate leads, and that revolves around you know understanding who your target customer is, understanding their pain points or aspirations, and uh, you know delivering something of value to them. So what what most offline business owners don't understand that that online business owners do understand is the value of building a list of people that are prospective buyers for that product. Um, so that's really the first thing is you know how. To, who are the target people? What are their pains and aspirations? What can I create for them that will help them uh, make a better buying decision? Because in a lot of times, if you don't frame the conversation as to why somebody should buy from you versus somebody else, then their only choice is to decide based on price because they have no other criteria to judge by, right? So. You know, for you, if it's if it was like you know seven things you need to know before you buy an investment property, or you know, for me, you know, five things you need to know before you hire somebody to build your website, whatever it is, but something of, of value that you can use to build that list. And then after you've built a list of those people, um, you need to make a presentation, right? So it's basically leads, presentations, and, and and sales, right? So generate a list of people make them some sort of presentation and whether that's an offline presentation in a face-to-face -face meeting uh, and you kind of automate the process of scheduling that meeting and f reminding them and preparing them for the meeting that can all be done for an offline business uh, or if it's online it's usually in the form of a webinar or a Google Hangout like this but you know you get people to you invite people to register you remind them to show up you track whether they showed up or not and you follow up with those that didn't show up and you send them a replay and for those that did show up and didn't buy you're sending them you know either additional bonuses or some uh, urgency or you know payment plan something whatever it is they you know, testimonials whatever it is that they need to get pushed over the fence but you know at the end of the day that those are kind of the three core phases leads presentations sales and then front really the fourth is referrals is like you know when, once they buy from you First of all, once they buy from you, how do you get them? How do you deliver an awesome experience for that customer, so that they'll not only consume your product and enjoy consuming your product, but then also refer you and give you testimonials? Right, and then um, absolutely, I think that's the most important thing is once you have that client, obviously you want to over. I think you always need to over deliver to them, so that they, they you know, they love everything that you do, and and every time you release something new, they can't wait to consume it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and then that's yeah, you know, that's actually where I see a lot of you know online internet marketers kind of kind of drop the ball a little bit, which is you know they'll do they'll put all this effort into the front end getting you to buy and this big launch promotion and all that kind of stuff, but then once you buy their course or training, they're not really doing what they could to to track your engagement in that system. Like you know, hey, you bought this two weeks ago, but you haven't logged in. Let me send you some emails and see what's going on, or have somebody call you, or you know, if you have logged in but you're still on module one and you should be on module three by now, having a system that's kind of looking and monitoring that and and checking for that, uh, as well as if you are on pace and you hey you logged in, you finished module one, you finished module two, celebrating your success and you know congratulating you for making progress and encouraging that and you know. So, and those are very simple to build. It's just people don't take the time to build it necessarily. So, but right. those those are the things that are going to make those customers lifelong customers because, you know, as we know in this industry, especially the information marketing business, I mean, probably only thirty percent of people that buy something actually complete it, uh, and that's that's to me a, a travesty because it's valuable information that could change their life if they actually consumed it and implemented it. So, to me, it's kind of our responsibility to make sure that they do that. Yeah, well, that's so true, and and I mean, it, as you mentioned, this industry, I'm, I'm surprised even 30% because I meet a lot of people. I go, as you know, I go to a lot of events, and I meet a lot of people there. And sometimes I, I don't, you know, I might see them at one event, then I won't see them for maybe three, four, five, six months, and I say, oh, well, what have you done since I last saw you? And they're still in this exact same position, and they say, oh, well, I'm taking this course, this course, this course, but they never implement. And obviously, mm -hmm. you know, if you if you uh, don't implement, you don't get any results. And so many people, though, they get stuck and they keep taking course after course, and then they end up getting overwhelmed and they don't do anything. It's real. It is really sad. Yeah. 
Well, it, it, you know, and at least for me, like that's actually the reason that I prefer live events. Not only because of the networking and the ability to connect with, with people and and just be in a be in a space of of like mindedness, um, but the fact that you really don't have much choice but to consume the content. I mean, you can stay in your hotel room, I guess, but you know, if you're there. And you're going to spend four days. You're at least going to go through all the information. You're going to absorb all the information. Whereas when you buy like an online training, now it's up to you. It's like going to the gym. It's like you know, it's like that gym membership that you actually stuff to get in the car and drive to, right? It's uh... so true. So true. So so I've got a question. Um, we have obviously a lot of. Uh, New uh, entrepreneurs are going to be are watching this show. Um, I attract a lot of people that are just kind of getting into doing their, their, you know, some of them are getting out of the corporate world and into their own thing. What would be the one piece of advice you would give them if you're, if you're just starting out and just, you know, starting to think about some of the things you want to launch and create? What would be some of your advice to them? Uh, well, so again, I think the, uh, the very first thing is to is to stay focused, um, you know, and and you know, not get distracted by all the bright shiny objects. Not get on everybody's email list because you're going to get inundated with lots of enticing offers that sound like sound like wonderful things that you'll probably just spend a lot of money on and, and never use. So you know, get get clear on what you're trying to achieve, and and create that plan for it, and then try to stick to it and put the blinders on as as much as you can. I mean, not be not be completely unopen to other opportunities, but you know. Know what you want to do. Know who you want to impact. Know your why, right? Understand, you know, why are you doing this? What's what's the outcome that you want to that you want to accomplish? Um, one of the companies that I work with called Lifebook. Uh, it's an amazing program because it forces you to actually go through all twelve categories of your life and figure out exactly what you want, why you want it, and what you need to do to get it, and and consciously think through it, write it out, so they have a plan and that you know, hey, here's Here's my mission. Here's what I'm trying to achieve for myself in terms of lifestyle, in terms of quality of life, in terms of relationships, etc. And here are the things I need to do to accomplish that. And you know, it's at the end of the day, as as you know, it's it's not about money. It's not about just you know freedom to go do whatever you want. Although that's a big part of it, um, but it's about you know what impact are you having and, and how are you. How are you impacting your life, your family's life, and those that you serve? So. Yeah, we're talking about impact, that's a perfect segue into my next question that I wanted to ask you anyway, which is all about making a difference. And what are the, some of the things that either you're doing or have done or want to do? What what lights you up outside of the uh, outside of the uh, marketing world? What what sort of stuff lights you up out there? Yeah, so for me, it's all about uh, working with kids and, and helping kids become you know entrepreneurs and teaching them all this stuff that they're never going to learn in school, uh, things about goal setting, things about the principles of wealth, things about uh, success and, and, you know, the, and, and breaking the bad patterns that they're actually are being established in them in school, which, you know, they don't want them to think outside the box, they don't want the, you know, they want them to kind of toe the line and keep their head down and so all that kind of stuff. I, I want to definitely work with, with kids to that uh, degree. Uh, I also, because my background was was always kind of action sports, you know, skateboarding, snowboarding, BMX, motocross, all that kind of stuff. To me, uh, those athletes are the most uh, most well positioned to be entrepreneurs. They already think outside the box. They already don't play by the rules. They know how to fall a hundred thousand times and get back up every time and keep doing because they're passionate about what they do. They want freedom. There's no, there's no other freedom bigger than flying through the air and knowing that you might die when you land, right? Um, so those guys have a, have a real core characteristic, I think, to be to be entrepreneurs. And if you look at somebody like Tony Hawk, for instance, who's you know totally channeled that into clothing, into video games, into foundations, into into all these different things. Um, so something you know that that's a group that that I think I could be effective with because I have that that background and you know. Otherwise, those kids can also become, you know, on the on the bad side of things too, right? So they have that rebel rebel type mentality, and that can get them in trouble as well. So teach yeah, them how so to take their yeah. So important to channel it on the on the right side of things yeah. instead of the bad. So so yeah, yeah that's, that's kind of what it is for me, kids. You know, even even my son. Um, it's funny. I, I grew up. My parents were in Amway when I was a kid, and uh, and I grew up. Saturday. I remember Saturday nights sitting in the lobby of a Holiday Inn while they were inside in, in Amway meetings 
and I was never inside, right? I could hear all the rah rah and cheering and, and all this kind of stuff, and I'm in the lobby playing Space Invaders or Asteroids all night or something like that. Um, so now my kid, like, I'm making sure that he's actually in the event. Uh, and in fact, he was. We just took him to an event in Orlando where he was really the only. He was the only kid there. There were, weren't actually even supposed to be kids there, and he's ten. Uh, but good for you, know, good for you by the way. I want to commend you for that because I, I totally agree with you. I don't think school prepares kids for the real world anymore. I mean, the stuff that they're teaching is the same as it was, you know, back in in olden days. And and the world has evolved and changed so much, and yet the education system hasn't. And and I just want to commend you for that. First of all, thanks, man. Thanks. Yeah, I, I'm trying to get him the experience of. Not, I'm not. I'm trying to get the the knowledge into him. You know, passively as, as much as possible, and he, sir, he was sitting there for the most time playing video games on his iPad. But you know, his questions are being asked; he's answering them during the group activities. You know, he was like, we had to work on a pitch for something like that. He's like, and he, we were crafting the offer. He's like, oh, you gotta do a half-day workshop. <laughs> you know? Love it, love it. Yeah, but I'm actually gotta, in the same. Yeah, I'm in the same boat with my daughter. She's graduating from high school, and we've been talking about building some brands for her and stuff. And I'm, I'm more, I'm just as excited as she is about it. But yeah, I mean, that's awesome. I wish, uh, you know, when I was ten, I had a dad like you. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm blessed to be able to, to do that with them, and you know, it's uh, very cool. It'll be very interesting cool. To see how it manifests. Yeah, so we're uh, unfortunately drawing to a close here, but I want to ask you. Uh, we talk a lot about implementation as opposed to just learning stuff. And, not, and, and if, if somebody um, is listening, what are some of the takeaways you want them to have? What can they do you know, after, they, after they stop listening to, to this? Hopefully they're going to listen to some more episodes. But what should they do after that? What should they do uh, uh, as an action step? What can they, what's their next step? Well, so uh, you know, one thing that will probably help them uh, is you know, they can go to my website and get a, a free copy of, of the How to Create a Sales Vortex book. Uh, as well as an interview that I did with Jay Abraham. So if they just go to infomarketingsystem.com or the salesvortex.com, either one, uh, they can download that book, and that'll kind of give them the, the blueprint of of all the different things that they need to think through uh, with their marketing funnel. Uh, and then from there, it's really just pretty much you know take out a sheet of paper or use some sort of mapping software. We usually use like Lucidchart to to kind of map out our our process flows. And just map out, you know, here are the things that need to happen for a customer to purchase from me. And like I said, work backwards. Think of all the if-then scenarios uh, if, if you can. Um, but, you know, just follow the template kind of laid out in the book. And then start with one piece. Like, don't feel like you got to build the whole thing. Start with something simple, a landing page where I can start building a list. Once I've got a landing page and I've started building a list, what's a simple offer that I can make them for a low-cost product to convert them from a prospect to a customer and then what's the next thing I want to sell them what's the next thing I want to sell them like you should definitely have a, a level of escalation from free to you know let's say seven to 47 or 97 bucks and then something at 97 to 297 in that range something at around 497 to 997 thousand like think through like you know because you don't want to be a one-hit wonder either you don't want to have just one thing for them to buy from you and then nothing else um, you can do that with just partnering with other you know people that have content uh, and sell their products as an affiliate that's another way to get started quickly and figure out kind of what will sell it's just put affiliate offers in there but uh, your, your goal really in this business is to you know, find people that are hungry for something and figure out what it is they want and give it to them. Not find what you're passionate about necessarily and create something that you think is awesome and then find out that nobody wants it. Right? You, you can still wrap the two together, but you got to figure it out from their perspective of what they want, not, not yours. So true, so true. So uh, th thanks again, Teddy, for being here. I mean, you're, you're obviously a wealth of information, and I know a lot of people are going to be inspired by what you have to say, including myself. I, I love to listen to, uh, to the stuff that you do. I find it very fascinating. I wish I had known, I, I wish I was, uh, sometimes I wish I was doing some of the stuff that you do because I find it really kind of uh, fascinating to see, you know, just the conversion process and the, the sales vortex, as you call it, and it, it is truly fascinating. It's a whole world that I didn't even know about not that many years ago, and it's just so exciting. So, awesome. Well, thank you for thank you for uh, for inviting me to this, man. It's uh, I, I love having these conversations, and I love getting this information out there because I, I know it could definitely free free a lot of people from from the mistakes and the and the struggles that they end up having in this business. And 
you know, for me, uh, you know, my, my mission, my passion is anybody that does have a powerful message that can help others. I want to make sure that I can help them get it out there, and this is this is the pretty much the proven way to do that. So the more we can get it out there, the better. Yeah, well, I'd love to have you back on again and, and ask you a whole bunch more questions and uh, and learn, you know, pick your brain a little bit more if that's okay. Hey, anytime, man. Anytime. Looking Great. Forward. Well, thank, thanks so much, Teddy, and and thank you, the uh, viewers, for tuning in today and and watching another episode of Entrepreneurs Making a Difference. We look forward to seeing you again in another episode.